today on Rappler. Two bombs explode near the finish line of the Boston Marathon, killing at least three and injuring at least 125. A 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit southeast Iran, killing at least 40 people. He talked to the president, talked to him, he said, Baka ako ang problema. So, baka gusto ko, baka walis na muna ako. Maglagay na muna kayo ng iba. And Chairman Sixto Villantes offers to resign after a series of Supreme Court rulings against the Comelec. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Two bombs explode near the finish line of the Boston Marathon Monday, that's Tuesday in Manila, killing at least three people and injuring at least 125. Boston Police Commissioner Ed Davis says that as, at 2.50 p.m. Boston time, that's nearly 3 a.m. in Manila, two simultaneous blasts occur along the route of the marathon's finish line, about 50 to 100 yards apart. News reports say an eight-year-old boy is among those killed in the blast. The explosions leave a street littered with blood and debris as spectators flee the area. NBC News citing officials says the police found multiple explosive devices in Boston, raising the possibility of a coordinated attack. U.S. President Barack Obama goes on national television to say it was not yet clear who was behind the blasts. We still do not know who did this or why. And people shouldn't jump to conclusions before we have all the facts. But make no mistake, we will get to the bottom of this. And we will find out who did this. We'll find out why they did this. Video footage of the marathon shows the first explosion coming from the left side of the course behind the spectators. El Mercato of the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C. says no Filipinos are among the injured as of their latest reports. At least 10 runners from the Philippines participated this year. The Boston Marathon is one of the biggest annual athletic events in the United States with nearly 27,000 racers who must qualify to compete. Rappler social media producer Ryan Macasero talks to Arlen Macasib, a triathlete who was part of at least 10 Filipinos in the Boston Marathon. Although he finished the race an hour before the explosions, he says the incident comes as a serious shock. We saw it. It was kind of like September 11th. You know, you, you hear something, but it's not until you actually see the video that, you're, that you believe it. Well, it was like just disbelief. You know, you're, you're, you're angry and you're, and you're, you know, why would anyone want to do this? Uh, According to his count, he says more than 17 Filipino citizens joined the race. So, group, I actually only know, I, I actually have 18 people because I, I, I took all the people that, that signed okay. up as Filipino citizens. And those, those 12 that I knew directly were, were all safe. But, you know, when you watch the video coverage too, you can see like it, it, it did happen in one area and most of the people who were affected were, were the, uh, the spectators, not, not really the runners. So I, I wasn't so... Makasiyam says the bombings are sacrilege. Something you don't expect. You, like, you almost don't, don't need security in these races. Like, not, not for a terrorist attack or, or a bombing. You know, that's something that's mm -hmm. really out of the norm. But a really sad day for the sport because it's, you know, it's taken um, so, something away from us. You know, it, this is like, a, you know, the Boston, you know, the, the finishing line is, is like, uh, holy grail for, for a lot of runners and, and they just, you know, it was a sacrilege what, what, what happened there, you know. Makasiyev says he plans to continue joining marathons in the future. If we don't participate, th then we let these guys win. You know, who, mm -hmm. who's responsible for, for the attack, you know, that, that, that's, that's what they want. They want us to live in fear. So, so you know, I, I think we need to, to not let this affect us. We, we need to a U.S. military helicopter taking part in a joint South Korea-U.S. drill crashes near the North Korean border Tuesday. In a statement, U.S. forces in Korea say the CH-53 Super Stallion helicopter, quote, executed a hard landing while on a routine flight in Cholwon County, which touches on the border with North Korea. The precise cause of the accident is not yet known. Five other crew members and 16 other service personnel are taken to a U.S. military hospital in Seoul. The accident occurs at a time of heightened military tensions on the Korean 
Korean Peninsula, partly due to North Korea's anger over the military exercises, which it sees as an invasion rehearsal. There are 28,500 U.S. military personnel permanently stationed in South Korea. A 7.8 magnitude earthquake hits Iran in a remote area close to the Pakistani border Tuesday at about 3.44 p.m. Iran time. The Iranian Seismological Center says the quake was located about 81 kilometers north of Saravan in the southeastern province of Sistan, Baluchistan. The BBC reports tremors were felt across the region of the Middle East all the way to the north. Iran's government-run TV initially estimated 40 killed. Reuters says Iran's Boucher nuclear power plant is not damaged. The U.S. Geological Survey report says the depth of the earthquake was 15.2 kilometers. Voting, voting 9 to 6, the Supreme Court stops the Commission on Elections from implementing its airtime limits on political ads. The order comes barely a month before the May 13th elections during the home stretch when senatorial candidates scramble for paired for paid airtime to maximize name recall. Under Comelec Chair Sixto Brillantes Jr., the poll body set new airtime caps for political ads to be faithful to the intent of the Fair Elections Act. For all national candidates, an aggregate of 120 minutes in all TV networks and 180 minutes in all radio stations. For all local candidates, an aggregate of 60 minutes in all TV networks and 90 minutes in all radio stations. In February, broadcast networks GMA7, TV5, and the Kapisanan ng Broadcaster ng Pilipinas or KBP asked for a temporary restraining order on the Kamalek rule. They say the limit is too restrictive and violates the people's right to information. In previous elections, the Kamalek under Chair Benjamin Abalos imposed a more liberal interpretation of the law, 120 minutes per TV station and 180 minutes per radio station. The nine who concurred are Justices Antonio Carpio, Martin Villarama, Jose Mendoza, Lucas Bersamin, Justices Teresita Leonardo de Castro, Diosdado Peralta, Marvic Leonet, Presbytero Velasco, and Jose Perez. Those who dissented are Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno, Justices Arturo Brion, Bienvenido Reyes, Mariano del Castillo, Estela Perlas Bernabe, and Roberto Abad. Dismayed by the Supreme Court rulings against the reforms he initiated at the Commission on Elections, Chairman Sixto Brillantes Jr. says he's thinking of offering the president his resignation. Brillantes says he's disappointed with the court's order stopping the poll body from implementing airtime limits on political ads. Tatrabaho lang ako rito at making the reforms necessary. Pero kung tiaro tiaro lang, ito bang status quo ante? Pati kung naman pa pa ng sarili ko rito, maybe talk to the president, talk to him and say, baka ako ang problema. So baka gusto ko, baka malis na muna ako. Maglagay na muna kayo ng iba. Pag-aral lang ko lang. Serious. Oh, oh. The Supreme Court upholds an earlier ruling limiting the number of congressional representatives in the Judicial and Bar Council to one. The JBC is the body that screens candidates for the judiciary, voting 9-3-3. The court junks the motion for reconsideration filed by Iloilo Representative Niel Tupas and Senator Francis Escudero. In July 2012, former Solicitor General Francisco Chavez questioned the JBC's eight-member composition. The Supreme Court ruled in his favor, saying the JBC should only have seven members instead of eight, with Congress represented by only one lawmaker. Concurring with the majority opinion are Justices Antonio Carpio, Bienvenido Reyes, Teresita Leonardo de Castro, Estela Perlas Bernabe, Jose Mendoza, Jose Perez, Martin Villarama, Josdado Peralta, and Lucas Bersamin. Justices Mariano del Castillo, Roberto Abad, and Marvic Leonen dissent. The court says there's no need to have two representatives from Congress because the reference to it as a bicameral body, quote, refers to its primary function in government, which is legislation. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, a joint Australian-British study shows summer ice in the Antarctic is melting 10 times quicker than it was 600 years ago. The research team drills an ice core from James Ross Island in the continent's north to measure past temperatures in the area. Visible layers in the ice core indicate periods when summer snow on the ice cap thawed and then refroze. By measuring the thickness of the melt layers, scientists are able to examine how the history of melting compares with changes in temperature at the ice core site over the last thousand years. At number eight, 
For the first time, 37 French ministers and Prime Minister Jean-Marc Ayrault revealed their personal wealth on April 15th. In a move, President Francois Hollande hopes will restore confidence in his scandal-hit government. With the economy stagnant, senior officials admit the move could create resentment by unmasking several millionaire ministers. It sparks widespread debate in France, where the wealth of public officials has long been considered private. And at number nine, the field trip in North Korea by 10 students of the London School of Economics turns into a he said, he said saga as journalism ethics, legal and diplomatic issues come to light. BBC News executives did not heed the students' plea not to air the Panorama documentary by undercover journalists who accompanied the students while overtly filming in North Korea, which bans journalists. BBC says the documentary is crucial in understanding North Korea, but the students deny they gave their consent to the Panorama reporters. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page that crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most number of votes on the mood meter. These are the 10 stories that affected the way Filipinos feel. If we take a look today, today's story, the video captures Boston terror threat and Twin Blast Rock, Boston Marathon, 69% sad, 28% angry. We have uh, Binibining Pilipinas on Sunday, just a day earlier. The winner's crown, 57% happy. And the story that's gotten the most number of votes happened Saturday. Antiveros to Casino, this is the Rappler debate, why mama on NPA abuses, 70% happy. That leads to the mood of the day. If you take a look, a green day today. Most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, April 16th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.